All right, it's Tactical Foul. I'm Kyle Guru. Today we got an interesting little episode for you. Um, first, I would like to just point out the awesome little design done. Well, it's our logo as those who are listening or watching know. For those listening, sorry, you can't see it. Uh, go to the Instagram page, uh, Tactical Foul Pod at Instagram. You'll be able to see the picture I posted. Uh, but to give free advertisement to Displate, who did this, uh, who and the Sir Alex Ferguson one behind and the Batman one many have seen, uh, had to do a little rearranging. Uh, and you will see that. Uh, you'll see Batman back up uh, when we use the full view when I have another guest on. But it looks amazing. Uh, definitely going to keep using them. Metal posters, they're amazing. Uh, they look so clean. They're just really cool. A uh, couple other things before we really get rolling, I tell you what we're doing today. Uh, I did mention the Instagram. We've been doing some lives on there, uh, uh, doing some predictions. Uh, not great, not great percentage on there, but we're having fun. Uh, mainly at the expense of me just being an idiot. Uh, and I I went a whole video saying Red, Bur- Red Bull Salzburg. It's not that far. Austria and Germany are actually quite quite close. So, I mean, geographically speaking, I'm not that off. Um, yeah, I can't I can't even make that one sound good. Uh, that was just a that was I'm bonehead pretty much there. But having fun showing off the cards, uh, tactical foul cards on eBay, uh, which is where I do most of those. Obviously, we all know the website. Hopefully, by now, tacticalfoul.com, Tactical Foul Pod on Twitter. We have a Facebook page. Uh, we're trying to do some things here. Uh, please follow and subscribe to anything that we have going on. Of course, the podcast, wherever you're listening to it. Uh, trying to add as much substance and as much content for you guys as possible. And honestly, for myself, I do enjoy this. I definitely will. I definitely enjoy even more so engaging with anyone who wants to talk has something to say make fun of me uh whatever it is i don't care i love the back and forth i love the banter i love all of it uh so please keep commenting keep doing all the things uh i appreciate it so without further ado let's get into it let's get stuck in uh we're gonna do a little bit of uh i'm gonna put a i'm putting a different hat on today I'm going to I'm going to pretend to be the guy in charge of Manchester United. As we know, we lost another semifinal. We did finish third, three semifinals this year. I I'm not I'm not in love with how we did. I'm not. But I think that overall it's not the most unsuccessful of seasons. Uh I think at the I think at the beginning of the year we probably would have taken that. Uh you know, it is what it is. We should have beat Sevilla. There's no reason we shouldn't have 20 shots. We should win the game. We weren't outplayed. Uh, I don't think we were amazing. We just were better. And there were points where we were much better. So, and then we finished third, obviously. By a lot. By a lot of points were we away from second. Not, we didn't finish third by a lot of points from fourth, obviously. We were tied on points and won on uh, and got it due to goal differential. With that said, Manchester United definitely needs strengthening. And we have done better in terms of bringing players in and, you know, spending our money wisely, where we've always spent money. It's just whether or not we're bringing in the right players. Do they fit the system? Do they fit the culture? Whatever it is, uh, we hadn't been doing a great job. A little bit better now, but I think that... I have some ideas where I think that if we brought, if we did these things in this next transfer window or whatever, uh, we would be challenging for the title. And I, I think at least one of these, we, we would have at least some trophies in our cabinet. That's that's bare minimum. We And we'd definitely be fighting for a title. The one thing I'm going to put on this is I'm going to do this video without... Jaden Sancho. Obviously, that's the big news is we're trying to buy him. Will we or will we not uh, spend the $120 million, which is basically what it is, comes down to. 
spend the money or don't. Which I, it, I'll be honest, I think we're gonna buy him. I think we're doing the same thing we do every year, where we're like, oh, we're gonna try to negotiate, but we're the worst at negotiating because we just take a long time and then end up paying whatever they want. We didn't win that. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's some kind of backroom dealings or whatever where there's conditions that didn't get put in or whatever it is. <laughs> But in the end, for the most part, we pay exactly what the reported fee is that they wanted. With that said, I, I think that that's just... I I hope we get Jaden Sancho. But I'll be honest, I think I'm tired of hearing about it. I just want to see it happen. I want to see it happen. Um, so I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to do all of these. Uh, everything we talk about here is without Jaden Sancho. So basically, what I would do... If Jaden Sancho was not uh, a player, let's put it that way, because I'm not going to pretend that we're not getting him because uh, if he's out there, that's someone we want. So let's let's get into this. I, I will talk about some players to buy and to sell. Uh, I'll even mention a little bit about some people I think that should be loaned out. Um, let's get right into it. I got I, I put some thought into this, so hopefully I seem prepared a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk first about the people that I would sell. Um, first, we should get into who's already been sold. Um, Alexi Sanchez. He was terrible for us. Has done all right for uh, Inter. One of the worst signings that we've ever made for a few reasons. One, he was already declining at Arsenal. Two, it halted Martial's progress because Jose didn't like him. But he was having an incredible season. Up until that point, he was on pace to have his best ever season. Obviously, he ended up not having that, uh, which is not a surprise considering he went from starting all these games. He was, I think he had scored like four goals. Uh, I think after, in a certain period of time, he was like he had like four or five goals and like three some assists in, the, in like six games or something like that. And he was doing really well. And then we brought in Alex Sanchez, and he got put on the bench. It was wild, and of course, and he just didn't play as much. He was coming off the bench every game, and it just it didn't make a lot of sense. With that said, we're not getting a transfer fee, uh, <laughs> which is not surprising. Um, but with that said, uh, we are going to get about twenty million in wages back for the year. So I'm going to take that as a win, and no matter who I say. In who we're going to bring in is going to even come close to matching what he was being paid on wages. There's no way. There's no way. And I have some very top class players in this list. But $560 million, or 600, I'm sorry, $560,000 a week. Yeah, I just blinked like I was on meth because it's, I, I am my, that's what I feel like because I, when I, when I hear that, and then when I think about what he, he did, somebody was on drugs. Maybe it's me, because maybe it's just not real, because I don't see how it could be. Alexis, phenomenal player. Let's not, let, let's not act like he wasn't, or at least in his past has not been a phenomenal player. It just was never a good buy, uh, and I, I wish him luck. I hope he does well, and he seems like he's doing a little bit better, and obviously Inter have a bright future. They're in a in the final of Europa League, and we're not. And Conte's a good manager, especially in in Italy. He fits the the culture of Italy, so I think he'll do well there. Uh, next player, we're gonna go back to Italy for this. Uh, Chris Smalling. Uh, I I would I would actually like to have him on the bench. I just don't think that that's what he's wanting to do. I think he has a few more years of being a good player, and he did really well at Roma. He was always a good defender. It's just he didn't – it just never fit with what we were trying to do, any manager, really, uh, except for I would say there was a period under Jose where he was quite strong, and he looked very good. Um, and he did – so with that said, I, I, I value him, I think, with what he did – Having an English, you know, he's got that English tax. I think we can fetch somewhere in the twenty million range. I know he's a little bit older, but he's old, and I think he's young enough to where he's in his prime right now. 
uh, and you can get somewhere around there, especially if he goes to a Premier League club, especially if he goes to a Premier League club. So I'll, I'm going to put a $20 million price tag on him, so keep track of that. Um, the next guys out there, uh, and this is not a big surprise, is Marcus Rojo on loan in Argentina. I don't know if he's going to stay there, if he'll come back to Europe, whatever it is. I think either way, um, kind of a cult. He has like a little bit of a cult following. Uh, people just enjoy him, and I, I enjoyed him. I didn't think he was a bad player, uh, an interesting player, but it, he loved to tackle. The man loved to tackle. Studs up or studs down. Um, <laughs> either way, and I think that's why, you know, that's why people loved him. He was that His mentality was insane. He's a psychopath. And you kind of love it about him, without a doubt. Uh, I think that we're probably not going to get very much for him. Uh, not, I think probably about $5 million. I think that that's, that's probably what we can expect from to get for him. Maybe a little bit more, but not much. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll say reasonably $5 million. Uh, The next guy I think we'll get a little bit more money for just because of his age. He is... You know, he did start a good amount for us this year, basically out of necessity, not out of, you know, he probably shouldn't have been in the starting lineup, but that's Andreas Pereira. And this one hurts, and I I think it's just because I remember watching him in our academy, and I really, truly thought that he was going to be something special because he looked very special. And, of course, there's lots of players like that, right, where they just look like they're going to be something else. Uh. And they just don't amount to to what you hope they would for one reason or another. And he just hasn't. I think he still has youth on his side. I think he's only 23 or so. Not old. Um, I just think that Manchester United is too big of a club for him. I could see him going somewhere else in Europe. Maybe he goes like to... Um, maybe he goes... I don't know. Maybe he even goes to... I don't know that he'll go to the Dutch league. Maybe. I mean, he is Dutch and Brazilian. Um, I don't know where he'll go. Uh, but I think he'll go somewhere. I think he'll have a successful career at probably, you know, if he stays in England, probably a middle-tier team, something along those lines, or he's on the bench somewhere, um, role player. Or if he goes somewhere else... Um, I don't think he'll be in, I don't think he'll ever be a champions league, champions league player. Um, at least not a starter, maybe on a champions league team. Um, but he's a role player. I think that's what I see at this point. I hope I'm wrong. Cause I really, I really truly loved him like as a player, uh, before he got into the first team. I've, he's kind of, he hasn't, he hasn't impressed. Honestly, there's been glimpses, but never, he's never put it together fully. I think that we can get $10 million for him. Again, I think a lot of that is down to age, and he does have experience at a young age. Uh, but we'll see. I think $10 million is reasonable. Uh, the next guy is... This one's tough because I, I think there is rationale for him to stay, um, but I think he will leave because it's the best thing for him to do. I don't think he wants to leave, but Jesse Lingard probably needs to leave. He needs a new start. He needs just he he just needs to revive his career. He is should be in the prime of his career, and we've seen it. He's got talent. He he has talent. I mean, the season he had about you know two years ago or whatever, and he's dealt with a lot of personal things that I think have definitely hindered him. And I think if that can get remedied, which it seems like it, it from interviews he's doing, it seems like it is getting remedied a little bit more. If that's the case where it's been a lot of mental things, I would love for him to stay and just be a role player because um, he loves the club. He's a United fan, has been his entire life. And he does bring, and he can bring something. When we are in a, when we are sat back, when we're pressing, he's great at being the, the focal point, especially from a, from like the 10. Now, obviously, we have Bruno, but, like, in games, oh, even on the wing, he's very good at pressing. I think he does provide um, some creativity. Obviously, he does the running. He's a good guy to bring off the bench to play in cup games. 
He can do that, especially when he's on. Uh, but I think for him right now, it seems like the best thing is for him to leave to get a move uh, somewhere in England, most likely. And I think we'll get around $15 million for him. He's an, he is a former, at least right now, former international player, uh, has had put up good seasons. When you look at some of the guys who have gotten – who've gone for good money. He's still only, I think, 27. He's not, he's not, he should be entering prime. I, th- I think 15 is very reasonable for him. Um, now we get into some of the controversial uh, ones. And I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with this. I, honestly, he's leaving mainly because he's one that we can get money for. I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's actually quite a good player. But based on the players that I am planning to bring in, we need to... I don't think he would sit on the bench, and he would have to. Because uh, he's too young. Uh, he's he's in the like 25 range. Too young. He's been playing too much. He'll want to move. And honestly, he'll probably do well because I think he's a decent player. I think, uh, as we saw in our last game, I think that he does not strike me as this top-level center back. That's Victor Lindelof. Uh, he just doesn't seem to like demand, like be as commanding as what I would want from a center back. Um, you know, maybe Aaron's at fault, and he is to a certain point, but on the on the on the second goal, but. I think Lindelof just is at fault, and I I just think you see, he kind of gets bullied, and I. You know he's very good with the ball at his feet, very good. He's good at intercepting passes, um, just kind of you know. That's one thing, not necessarily stepping to them, but intercepting passes like through balls, right? Like players try to play in the channels. He's very good at reacting to those. Uh, he's not like super athletic but he's just very crafty in that way and he's pretty smart about it um but he does get bullied he's not very good in the air and that's a struggle for us right now and I think that we have better players more well-rounded players though uh potentially more prone to injury which is why they're on the bench um but we have those players there that are better if they can stay healthy. So I think for his age, we've got him for about 45 million. I think for his age, he's starting. He's had a good season. I mean, it's not like he had a bad season, but we can do better. I think we can get 35 million for him. And yeah, I think that's fair. That's a right around his value. Um, next guy. I need to start by saying that there is nothing that I will say negative about this guy. I will criticize him, and when he has a poor game or doesn't do well, or I can I can call that out. But I will not allow po- like subpar performances or you know whatever it is to cloud my judgment on what this guy means for our club. That is David David De Gea. And now I realize he's tough because he's on high wages. And he just signed a deal. But I think that we're at an impasse with Dean Henderson. And it doesn't make sense for us to bring Dean Henderson back if we keep David on the books. So I think that Dean will look for a move if we don't bring him back this year, especially after how well he did. And I just don't see how we have those two fight it out for uh, the number one spot. Um, I just don't think that makes sense. So, David De Gea, I think that... One, I think that he's one that we can get money for, good money for still. You know, only 29 or 30. So that's young for a goalkeeper. And I do want to mention this. I know he's struggled. He has struggled since the World Cup. 
But that season before the World Cup, I don't know that anyone realizes this, but there is goals, expected goals saved, right? Goals that should have basically just what it is is they should have been goals and somehow the goalie pulled something out of their ass and saved their team a goal from getting scored on. Typically, when they, after the, you know, you take everything into consideration, uh, I think top-level goalkeepers are in, like, that five range. The season before the World Cup, De Gea was in the teens, I believe. It was somewhere like 14, 15 range. It was an asinine amount of saves that he made. Like, this guy single-handedly put us into spots that we didn't belong for a while. So I can never, never hate on this guy too harshly. I can never be like, ah, you know, I I don't know. There's a lot of people that just are so quick to discredit this guy and like to forget about what he has done for us. And I, I think he's put he's been here for a decade. He, you know, he has put in... He's he has gone through way more shit than that guy deserves for how high level he was. Because at one point he was the best goalkeeper in the world. You can argue with me all you want, and if it was only for that year, that's fine. If that's if that's it, but for that year he was the best goalkeeper in the world. I don't care because he was good with his feet. He was doing all the things he needed to do, and he was saving things that he shouldn't have been able to save more times than anybody else. So. For that, I think fifty million, top level goalkeeper. That's that's honestly fairly cheap. We will get to this, but I think there is potentially a swap deal of some sorts coming along when we get to the buys. That is my sells. There may be more, but right now that's who I have that we should sell. All right. Let's quickly talk about our loanees. Chong, Tahith Chong is already loaned out. Uh, Werder Bremen, so he's on the list, of course. I think that Diego Delo, I don't think, I think it's too early. I, I contemplated putting him on the list for sales. I think it's too early. Um, I'm going to say loaned out. I think that he needs to either go to Italy or to a lower level Premier League team or even a championship team. The reason is just the style of play. He is a he's a very good attacker. He's a right wing back at this point. However, he's going to be a backup. We need him to be able to defend better and just to be able to uh, that that's what it is. He just needs to be able to defend better. And then if he's able to add offensively, that's great as well. And honestly, the biggest thing is he just needs game time. He needs game time a lot. So I think that's where that would suit him well. Uh, Garner, Jimmy Garner, uh, he's ready to play uh, first team football. He's just not. I. He's just not ready, and there's not enough spots for him to play first team football for Manchester United. Now, he's only 18 years old, and he's a center mid, so there's no harm in that. He should be on loan. I would say championship would probably be good. Really learn men's football. Honestly, get the shit kicked out of him. Phys- like, literally get the shit kicked out of him. Um, handle that, you know, one or two years of that, and then bring him back in, and I think he is going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal player. Um, this one I'm, I'm torn on, but I, I think it's the right thing because of how much football he missed this year. And that's Axel Tunzebe, who I still have an incredible amount of belief in. I've seen him play for a long time. I saw him play at Aston Villa. He was phenomenal when they, when they won, uh, promotion, but I think he needs football. Uh, he needs to, I think he, he needs to stay in the prem. He does, and I think there's plenty of teams that would be willing to take him. He's a very good center back, very athletic, good in the air, good with his feet. 
uh, leader. He was a leader for that Aston Villa back line at a young age. And I think uh, if he gets some time, he could be a very, very good player. Uh, my only worry for him is Ted Mangi is in the wings. He's younger, and he might be better. I th- I think that that guy is uh, he's a superstar. Like it, as a center back, I I don't I have not. Axel was one of the more impressive young center backs that I've ever I had seen, and Ted Mangi is shockingly good and he's young he's very young so we'll see we'll see all right that brings us to the buys this is where people are going to argue this is where people are going to say you're an idiot there's no way you're getting him uh there's no way that he would go to you yeah i'm talking you cam i know what you're gonna say i don't care i have reasons and i have reason to believe that they would come and if nothing else, we got money. <laughs> got to keep it real with you. Uh, we're we're creating a great culture, but at the end of the day, money does talk. It does. So if that's the case, that's the case. Let's start with this. Like we said, no Jaden Sancho. No Jaden Sancho. So we do need more uh, players in the attack. Depth. We need depth because Rashford, Greenwood, and Martial had phenomenal seasons. Let Greenwood start for a whole year. Ooh, I don't know. We may not even think we need Jaden Sancho. I I think we should get Jaden Sancho, but I this kid is is ridiculously good. He he is the best young player youth player I have ever seen. And what he does, I've never seen. I've never seen it at the like, you know, him terrorize other players his age or older, like he does. Um. Now, before people jump on me, I'm saying at that level in the academy. Yes, I know who Kylian Mbappe is. I know who Jaden Sancho is. I get it. I get it. I didn't see them in the academies. Shut up. <clears throat> All right. My first buy, because we need depth. This is a free one. And it's and his team just got relegated. He's linked to a lot of Premier League clubs, and that's Ryan Frazier. Struggled this year, but Bournemouth struggled, and he didn't play. Uh, he was hurt. The year prior, though, had six goals and 15 assists in the Premier League. He can provide depth on the wing. He can provide depth at attacking mid, which is what he played a lot in that season um, that he had 15 assists. He's got good pace, good trickery, and obviously he's a very good uh, distributor of the ball. I think that would add. I think he would add to our team for sure. Someone that we could bring off the bench and you know could provide something different potentially to the other wingers that we have. You know, I think that, honestly, um, I like Dan James, but I think what he could provide, you know, not as much pace, but he can provide kind of what Dan James brings to a certain extent, but more end product. That's that's kind of how I view Ryan Frazier. Next guy up has a $50 million release clause. And now, I wanted to be realistic with this. There, there are two players in this midfield that I considered. But his $50 million release clause was kind of what sold me on it. Because I think we, you know, if I am being realistic, I just, we have to, we can't. We're not going to spend $400 million or anything like that. Uh, so, I that was a big reason. But also, I, I value this player. I think he's phenomenal. We saw him absolutely shine against Liverpool. And I think he would continue that in the Premier League. And that's Thomas Partey. Um, 50 50 or $55 million release clause. He would excel in the Premier League, I really think. And, yeah, he would be the replacement for for Matic. 
He's not. I think he's 27 years old, entering his prime. Uh, he can play the six. He can play that. He's very good at shielding the back line. Very good at disrupting plays, making tackles, doing those things. But he also plays um, very much as a box to box. Can can connect passes and do those things. Um, I would love to see him essentially with Pogba play. Uh, and I'm not saying he's this player, but he. I think he has the athletic prowess and just like the awareness to at least play the role of Conte that um, Pogba is used to with the France team. So that would be very exciting. Um, I would love to bring him in. The next guy would be this one's gonna this one's gonna be like shut shut the hell up. There's no way. But there is a way. <laughs> there is. We need reinforcements in the back. There's no doubt about it. We can do better. And he is one of the best in his position, has been. I think he's very underrated, honestly. I don't think he gets talked about enough. Um, and he should. Uh, I think he's going to be more on the expensive side. But I he has turned down a new deal. And he's been phenomenal this year. Uh, that is David Alba. I think we're probably looking... Some values have him around 45. I think we're probably going to have to pay 60, 70, right around there. Um, can play center back, can play center mid, is a left back by trade. If we bring him in, I think that we... It, I mean, it's a no-brainer. He can do everything, which is, and he's a reason why we can put, uh, we can send uh, Axel on loan because he gives us another center back. And by the way, I'm not done with that. David Alba has continued to be amazing, but he he's un he is somewhat unhappy for whatever reason. Maybe not unhappy, but. Um, maybe not as content as he's been. And it sounds like he's looking for a move. Uh, this is, there's a couple of reports of this, of course, who knows if it's fully true, but those are the reports that we're working with. And so obviously I'm going to go with it. Cause if we get David Alba, I would be ecstatic. And then I think you just look at the team he plays left back. They have Alfonso Davies. And I get it, you know, Alfonso Davies wing back, blah, 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 blah. But I don't know. Got Alfonso Davies. You also have Lucas Hernandez, who can also play center back. I mean, may, may, I mean, yeah, I think, like, I mean, they have, I would say, I would say that, um, Maybe there's a spot because he is he's not old yet. Um, I just don't see a way that that team isn't being structured to life without him. Bayern does that really well. They replace their players really well, and they don't usually wait too long. They wait a little bit, and I, I think the reason why they're even more pushing the issue is because they know they waited a little bit too long with Ribery and Robin. little less on Robin, but definitely with Ribery. I, I see him leaving. I hope it's to us, but I, 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 don't, I don't know that. Hey, maybe he's at the end of his, you know, he's 28 years old. Maybe he's trying to get one big contract. We're pretty good at handing out big contracts. <laughs> so, um, and I think we're in a good place trajectory-wise where bring players in of his caliber, you can see where we would be going with that. So he would be a massive, massive buy. This next guy, I'm going to get called out for jumping on the bandwagon, but I need this to be known that I have, buy, I have been saying that I want this guy for at least two years. I've been buying this guy on FIFA for two or three years. I have been a big fan, and this is another mistake made by Manchester United. Because he was, 
he was he was on trial with us, and we didn't pick him. We didn't pick him up. Now, granted, he was on trial with, uh, Desh- ben- no, not Bernard, um, Roshan Williams, who was a ridiculous athlete, could do unbelievable things. Um, a big, uh, I, there was a lot of bi- uh, fans of Roshan and Axel. Those were the two. And so you can, un- I can, I can somewhat understand why, um, Obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Now we see it. He's better than both of those guys right now, without a doubt. Um, and maybe it was he got game time and different things like that. Uh, but it doesn't matter. He he grew exponentially into a great center back. That is Deo Upamecano. I've loved I've loved Upamecano for a long time. Um, I had him initially written down as like an eighty million dollar player now with that said he did just sign a new contract and there's a release clause at least that's what's being reported of 50 million if that is the case we pay that tomorrow now if it's not 80 85 million i get it i'm cool with it that's what we pay and we go from there this guy is so athletic so good on the ball, uh, phenomenal in the air. He is, I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. He's everything you want in a center back, and he is young, very, very young. He's going to get better. He's young enough to where you can build from him, but he is good enough where he can command that spot next to Harry and be the guy for the future. And whether it's Harry, who, you know, is obviously not old, but maybe it's not maybe it's not Harry in the future or whatever it is. Maybe we bring somebody else in or like I said, Ted and Mangi comes in. Uh but Upamakano could still be there. This is the guy that I I am I want us to have. He solidifies that defense. We had a very good defensive record because of our because of how we organized and different things like that. And we had decent, we have good players. There's no doubt about it. But we, we, there are two places in that back line that can be replaced with better players for sure. And I'm not, okay. Of course you can replace Harry Maguire with a better center back. I'm not saying that, but reasonably Harry Maguire is just fine. He's a great center back. Aaron Wambasaka could be replaced by a better right back right now at 21, 22. I'll give you that. But there's no reason to. He's 22, and he's, one. He's in my opinion, the best 1v1 defender in the league. So, no reason to replace him. <coughs> I, I, Upamecano changes things, though. He changes things drastically. He's the perfect partner. For Harry Maguire. Yeah, I, 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 and then you throw David Alba in that? Ugh. Ugh. That's disgusting. I, I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Obviously, with what we've said, 50 million. I'll go, I'll shoot in the middle, 65 million. If it's a, if it's a, if it's a release cause of 50 million, great. If not, I'll go, I'll go higher. I'll say 75. I'll say 80. I'll just say 80. That's fine. Um, and then on free, Ryan Frazier, four players we're bringing in. Uh, that's one more than we usually do, but it's possible. Um, I mean, in total, in total, we're looking at 195, you know, minus some of these other players. Oh, I didn't even mention this. I'm, I, I kind of hinted at it first. So before we get on that, so I apologize. I got sidetracked. I mentioned De Gea with a swap deal. There are a lot of talks, a lot of reports that Atletico are going to are gonna sell their goalie. Not necessarily they're going to sell him, but somebody wants him because uh, he's been one of the best goalkeepers in the world for, I mean, I think percentage-wise – 
save percentage wise, I think he is the best goalkeeper in the world and has been for uh, at least the last two years. So if he were to go, I think it makes a lot of sense for De Gea and Partey to swap. Um, maybe one side pays a little bit. Uh, it's it's probably us, but maybe not. I think it. I think that could be an even swap, um, just based on his release clause. Us, you know, De Gea being, you know, this caliber of goalkeeper, having this pedigree at least, Spanish, you know, having history with Atletico. Um, I think that would make a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Um, yeah, so let's go over this lineup. We would have, obviously, De Gea gone. Dean Henderson in goal. Romero as his backup. Aaron Juan Basaka at the right back. Maguire, Upamecano, David Alaba, Thomas Partey, Pogba, Bruno Fernandez, Greenwood, Martial, and Rashford. Huh. <sighs> huh. <sighs> Give me the shivers. <laughs> I that excites me. That team excites me. It's it has it has the ability to boss a team off the field. To at, it also has the ability to hit quick strike on the counter. It can do just about everything that you need it to do. And I think we're close to that. But solidifying that back line more allows our best players to do what they do best, and that's attack. Pogba can has more license to roam f- forward more. Oh, yeah, yeah. We want him closer to the goal. You know, whatever it is. Um, and then you have, obviously, Wambasaka needs to improve offensively. But you have David Alba who can help offensively. You can have, you know, Upamecano making those driving runs into the midfield, whatever it is. And Harry Maguire is very good on the ball and does the same thing. You have two center backs that can do that. That's a that's a scary, scary uh, starting 11. And then when we look at it, our, you know, you're going to have a, Gal- a Gallo, an attacker on the bench. You're going to have Frazier uh, that we brought in. You know, Mc, you know, maybe like McTominay, Fred. Obviously, I said Romero, you know, Another candidate that could be sold because we can get money, but depends on what you want to do. Luke Shaw or Brandon Williams maybe goes on loan or he stays. Um, then you still have Juan, Ma- uh, Juan Mata, Nemanja Matic, Daniel James. You ha- you have, you know, we have some players there uh, that make things interesting. I That's a, a deeper bench now and can do more. Uh, I didn't mention Eric Bailly, uh, you know, would still be there. I'm, I, I like the way that looks. I really do. I really, really do. Um, that team can compete for a title. I truly do believe it. And if it can't compete for a title, I love Ole. But if that team can't compete for a title, then then people are probably right. And I'm not saying first season we have to win a title because that's not how that works. But that's the type of team, when you look at those players, you look at the mentality that they seem to exude when they play, like they're going to bring this, th- that mentality to this team as well. That on top of their talent, that that's a team that can win a title and can win trophies. I would be very, very excited about that team. And, uh, yeah, so, Ed, uh, I figured this all out with my – with just a notepad and Googling stuff (laughs) Uh, and watching these games and seeing, seeing these players, you have teams upon teams of researchers. Come on now. It doesn't need to be these guys, but it should be in that ilk. These are the type of players we need to bring in. That's what we need. Those are the, the players that we need. The positions that we need to fill to be competing for a title, which is what Manchester United should be doing. We should never be settling, ever. So, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed. Please tell me what you think. Give me your honest opinion. I know a lot of you will. 
uh, who who shouldn't we sell? Who should we sell? Uh, who who do you think we should buy? Or whatever it is, get involved. Let me know. I'd love to hear it. And please, like I said before, I'm gonna plug this again. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Tactical Foul Pod, TacticalFoul.com. You can go to Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever you listen to uh, podcasts on. Uh, you can listen to this. Uh, like I said before, we have the Facebook page, Tactical Foul, and then Tactical Foul Cards on eBay, where we're putting up uh, so- mainly soccer cards. Uh, almost, actually at this point, all soccer cards. Uh, see what we have. See if it's something you're interested in. And yeah, Uh I will talk to you guys very soon. Don't don't uh, don't miss out on the predictions coming up uh, for the Champions League, Europa League, and all of the above. Uh, we will uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.